Okay, welcome to part three of our series on cloning Ableton's beat repeat device in Reactor. In this video, I'll be recreating the three different modes of playback that are available in beat repeat. And I'll allow the user to select which one is currently active using a list. So we're going to have three elements in this list. And they're going to be named mix, instrument, and gate. So mix means that we'll mix the input signal with the uh, stutter glitch. Instrument is how th we've had things set up so far where the input is muted when the stutter glitch is playing. And gate means that everything except for the active stutter glitches are going to be muted. And we'll see how these all work at the end of the video once we get it all set up. And you can see by default the list is going to output a value of 1, 2, or 3. And we want to use the value generator down here. Just press OK and it'll set our value outputs to 0, 1, and 2. Alright. And I just want to set the um, type of list to be a menu so the user can just open up this menu and select an option. Next I'm going to add a knob called volume and this is going to control the volume of the stutter glitches and nothing else. And we're going to do this in decibels so we're going to give it a maximum of 6 and a minimum of negative 72. And while we're at it let's give it a default value of 0. And the last uh, element panel element I want to create today is going to be a volume decay knob. And this can just range from 0 to 1, so we don't need to change that. We just need to edit the name. So the volume decay is going to be the amount by which our volume decreases at the beginning of a new stutter glitch. And so the repetitions can get quieter over time. So we'll create three inputs to our core cell for these new controls, and I'll name them Type, Volume, and Volume Decay. And then we can hop back to Primary really quickly just to wire these up. I'm going to get rid of these numeric elements, and we can wire in our new panel elements. And once back inside of core, um, we can start setting them up. So the type input can just become a quick bus. The volume, again, is in decibels. We want to translate that to an amplitude value. So we'll use a dB to amplitude module for that. And then we connect to a quick bus that we can, can name volume. Finally, the decay value is a little backwards. So decay of, va of zero means our signal's not decaying at all. So what I'm going to do is just take this value and subtract it from one, and that's going to become our volume decay amount. Adding these new features is going to require us to kind of restructure the way that we're playing back our signal. And so I want to create a new macro to assist with that. And this is going to be called the active macro. We'll have one input and one output. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to check to see if the input is receiving a value using the ES control module. So this is going to turn on a router depending on whether or not we have a, an actual signal coming in at the input. So if we do have a signal, we just want to pass it directly to the output. We're not going to do anything to it. If we don't have a signal, um, we're going to set a router. And this router is going to control a latch. So if we're not receiving an input, we're just going to trigger a value of zero. So this is 
you know, probably not the most efficient way to achieve this goal. But basically what we're doing is um, whenever any of our signals turn off, we're going to set them to be equal to zero. And this is important because in the past, um, what we have set up right now is we're taking our three playback methods and merging them together. But we're going to end up adding them together instead. And that means we can't have any um, old values kicking around. So we need to set the signal to be equal to zero immediately if it's not playing. So we can start by rewiring when our input is triggered and set to the output. So for example, if our playback method is set to mix, then we're always going to be mixing the input in with whatever else is happening. So if the type is equal to zero, we always want to trigger this. So I'm just going to create a new router, say if the type is equal to zero, and we can trigger it using the SRC quick bus. And then there's another um, contingency, which is to say that if the type is equal to two, if we've set um, the type to be gate, then we're never going to play this signal back. And so we can set another router and compare combination up and ask is type equal to 2. Um, actually rather we can set that to not equal to 2. So as long as type is not equal to 2 then um, we'll also be uh, playing back when the effect off quick bus is active. So these are our two um, playback options either the type is not equal to 2 and effect off is active or the type is equal to 0. At, a, at either of those times we want to be triggering our input to be sent directly to the output. So we can merge those two values together and use them to trigger the latch that's currently holding the input. Alright, so next up um, we have to do a little bit of editing to when we're recording a signal for playing back later as well. Um, this does not get played back when the type is set to gate. So again, if the type does not equal to, uh, then we'll send this through. If it does equal to, then nothing happens. Okay, so this signal is actually going to end up getting added to our um, input playback or even merged sorry because only one of these can be active at a time okay so those two values are going to get merged together and then we will use the active macro to make sure that at least one of those signals is being used and if not then we'll just set it to equal to zero all right and this value is going to end up getting added to our playback. And that will allow us to have the mix function where we're mixing two signals together. So we want to make sure that when the playback is not active, it gets set to zero. So we'll use the active macro for that. Then we're going to take it, take our playback, and multiply it by the volume that we've calculated. And finally we want to multiply it by the volume decay as well. The only thing that the volume decay affects is the playback of our stutters. And once we're done with both of those multiplications we can add this signal to the um, input. So we'll create a second quick bus for the decay. Um, I'm going to name this decay. And it has a different value than the volume decay quick bus. And we'll set it all up in a second. You'll see why. I usually might rename this to total decay. So there's the amount that um, we're decaying by at each successive iteration of playing back our sound and that's the volume decay and then the total decay is how much of 
that has accumulated. So let's get that set up and then we'll be ready to test today's work. I'm going to store the volume decay in a latch and we're going to trigger this latch at the beginning of a start playback event. So when we start playback we'll say hey this is the volume decay value at this point in time. Um, we're going to merge that with another value because there's two different values that can set our total decay amount. But that's the first one. The second one is going to come from a read module. And again, the output of this merge is going to be the total decay quick bus. All right? Now we're going to multiply this value by the volume decay amount and store it in a re uh, write module. Okay, so on a new quick bus, or sorry, on a new start playback event, we'll set the total decay value to whatever our decay knob is set to. And then at the beginning of each new repetition, we want to trigger the read module, which is going to um, multiply this value um, by itself and it's going to get successively smaller as long as the volume decay is set to anything but zero. So we just need to trigger this at the beginning of a new repetition, which is the upper output of this router here, whenever we've exceeded our maximum index value. All right, so at this point in time, we um, should be able to test everything and show that our three different playback modes are, are working along with the volume and the volume decay knob. Alright, in the next video we'll continue trying to add all the various options and panel elements that uh, Beat Repeat has available. Thanks for watching. Once again, this is Salamander Anagram.